Hey guys, it's Jared. This video is an expose on how the Illuminati beast system is manipulating our society. Brothers and sisters, we can no longer face this enemy sleeping. I'm working on a playlist called Defeating the Antichrist, with all content in it will be focused around overcoming the satanic Illuminati agenda. If this video helps you, help someone else. This foe is already defeated, but that will not stop billions from falling into his snare. 1 John 2.15 do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride in possessions is not from the Father but is from the world and the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. Think about that. Paul says, be not conformed to this world. One of the things that wages war against the soul is this world that is constantly pressing on you to conform to it. It's constantly applying pressure to shape you into its form. Be not conformed to the world means don't take its shape. Don't allow its realities, its attributes, its character to get somehow molded into your life. A world that is constantly trying to stain us and constantly trying to conform us to it. And it's a pressure. And I have to believe all the more in our day. You know, the truth is, people were people 200 years ago. But look what they didn't have. I mean, do you know how much of the world comes at us through computers and televisions? Do you realize how much? I mean, a hundred years ago, they didn't have those things. I mean, right now, do you know how many people are camped in front of a television across our city right now? If you were to guess percentage-wise, 80% probably in front of a television right now. I mean, you, you want the perfect indicator of where the world's at? Look at the world's advertising. And that's such a that's such an easy and yet very profound indicator of where society is, where the world is. Basically, advertising it shows you the very heart of what this world's all about. I mean, it shows you what it thinks about sex, it shows you what it thinks about alcohol, it shows you what it thinks about money, about making the other guy look stupid, about self-exaltation, self how you ought to dress, what sports stars you ought to worship. The influence that we're exposed to today is just astronomical. Do you guys realize these smartphones that have internet access, they can play movies on it. Do you realize just in the palm of your hand what you have access to today? You've got all this garbage and it's seeking to stain and seeking to conform. Brethren, you gotta fight. If you just lay down, this thing will chew you up. Brethren, we gotta do battle. Remember, there are anti-soul forces that we're dealing with and the world is one of them. And all those passions flow right out of this world. This concept of passions and lust is very closely associated with the world. Like 1 John 5 19, we know that we are, we are from God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. What you have is a world order, a system. It's the way the world is, the way the world thinks, the way the world operates. And the devil, and based on what it seems from Scripture, a third of these angels that fell in large numbers, they operate in this world. You get glimpses, like in Daniel, of the Prince of Persia, definitely not a human being. This Prince of Persia did battle with an angel that was coming to Daniel, resisted him. <coughs> Michael the archangel had to be dispatched to get him through. We're looking at cosmic forces, just like it talks about these authorities, these 
powers in heavenly place. They control nations and governments and there seems to be a hierarchy and a working and they basically control this world to destroy. That's what, that's what he comes for. To destroy, to deceive, to kill. To de I mean, he, he is cruel in his ways. He comes to do battle against the church. You guys need to get this. There is such a being who it seems at one time was some kind of crowning cherub. He was one of the most, if not the most, glorious of the angelic beings. So you've got to know that he had wisdom and knowledge of unbelievable capacity. And he fell and he took a third of the angels with him. Brethren, he exists to destroy God's people. When you see this dragon in the book of Revelation, I'll tell you what he's doing. He's chasing this woman. This woman, it basically is a picture of the true people of God. It's a picture of true Israel. It's a picture of the one from whom the Christ came. And he is chasing them. He's dogging them their steps. He does battle with them. Brethren, he is going about seeking to destroy. And what you have to realize is he is in control of this world. The prince of the power of the air, he rules here. It's, I recognize God is sovereign. It's partial dominion at best. It's restricted dominion. We see it in Revelation 20. He's on a chain. But no doubt anyways, in some limited capacity, he has the authority here. He has authority in this world so much so that he could say to Christ, I'll give you the kingdoms of this world if you bow down to me. Brethren, he is in control. And if you think about that for a second, here we are put out into the midst of the world as servants of Christ to declare his glory and his gospel. And in the midst of that world, it is controlled by demons all around us, all the time, in a sense that it is going to try, that world is going to try to conform us and spot us all the time. And it's with intent. It's not like, well, we just might happen to rub against it while we're, when we go out these doors. Brethren, it's the fact that there are armies arrayed against us working this thing so as to bring us down, to contaminate us, and to conform us into something that won't be useful to Christ. Something that will be defeated, something that will be ugly, something that will be unclean. Brethren, this is, this is what's happening. There is a darker meaning. There is a world around us that is a real enemy to the soul. Christ said this, Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. This is a foe that means to do us harm. This is not a foe that hates us and tries to stay as far away as, from us as possible. This is a foe that is constantly trying to trip us and stain us and mold us into its fashion. So you've got to resist, you've got to fight, and you've got to know that it's for real, and you've got to know it hates you. And it hates you with the kind of hatred that is seeking to destroy you, not stay away from you. You adulterous people, James 4.4, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So here's the thing. The world tries to spot you, stain you, corrupt you, conform you, mold you. And basically what this is saying is, if you yield to it, you are an enemy of God. To the people that resist the conformity, they're friends of God and the world hates them. But if you allow it to bend you, you're an enemy of God. If you like its shape, if you like its fashion, you show hatred to God yourself. This world hates you, this world hates Christ, this world hates God. So, worldliness is what happens to us when the world comes along, seeks to spot us or conform us, and we begin to conform. Good. One. It's like Vanity Fair. You remember that in Pilgrim's Progress? You go into Vanity Fair, and you know what they found? They found all the goods and the wares that the world had to offer. 
And there was, there was British row, and there was French row, and there was German row, and Italian row, and it had all the stuff. And they resisted dressing like the people there. You remember that? Faithful and Christian. They resisted buying what the world had to offer. They weren't interested. And it had all these things to sell. Brethren, any faith that saves us is faith that overcomes. It's faith that believes that God is so desirable and so lovable, so love-worthy, so worship-worthy. Christ is so magnificent and so worthy to be followed and to be had at all costs. That's what true faith is. It's when I believe that He is a treasure of inestimable value and I'm willing to endure anything to have Him. That's the truth of faith. You see, that's what shows it. That's what we're told. The faith is going to get put to the test. And if it's really true, see how that glorifies Christ? When you bring this faith along that says, I believe Christ is all, and then you say, oh yeah? Well, let's, let's just like Job, let's put it in the furnace. And then it comes out. Wow, it's still good. He still, want, he still wants God more than anything else. Let's put it in the furnace even more. You bring it out. You see how much God got glory? You see what was going on behind the scenes? Brings God tremendous glory. Well, this is the thing. When you take somebody and you say, oh, God says, let their eyes be open. Let there be light. Let them see the glory of Christ. Okay, now put them in Vanity Fair. See if devil try to sell them the best of your goods. And they come through clean, unspotted, unconformed. Brethren, they can abide forever? Yes, they were saved. They were justified by faith. But that faith proved true. The faith proves true by what it does in this world. Brethren, that's, that's the issue. You see, the things of this world, the things that belong to this world, it's passing away. And brethren, those people that delight in this world, passing away. Brethren, you see, the, you, you see where John's arguing? He says, don't love the, the world or the things in the world. And in verse 17, he says, the world's passing away along with its desires. I mean, can you imagine if people if people went up to an aircraft and it said, this aircraft is passing away. You will not make it to your destination. But climb on board and enjoy. Because until it passes away, there's going to be lots of party and lots of fun. You see, that's what Vanity Fair is. All these people partying, all these people living it up, all these people having fun, but death is just around the corner. That's, that's what that aircraft says passing away. This is what John's arguing. He's saying, don't get on board that plane. The ship's going to sink, folks. Don't get on there. And you see what he's saying is, if you love the world, you hate God. You can't have both. You either love God or you love the world. It's the fight to not compare Compartmentalize my life. This is what strikes me. It's the fight to not say, okay, this part of my life is sacred. This part of my life, it's ordinary. It's secular. Which a lot of people do that. I mean, people all over the place try to give God His due on Sundays, Maybe some of the real good ones on Wednesdays. But brethren, even though we would look at that and maybe we would say, well, yeah, you know, Sunday morning Christians are no Christians at all. But brethren, we can still get in the place where there's parts of our life. You see, this is the issue. This is the key. Brethren, I'll tell you this. If you have a segment of your life that you find you know what? I never think to thank God doing that. I don't even think of God while I'm doing that. In fact, that part of my life is kind of reserved to almost forget Him. Not that we would say it purposely, but when we get into that segment of our life, we kind of just forget Him. He drops out of the picture. Brother, that's worldly. Dump it. Be done with it. 
What God is saying to us is whatever you do, you need to do for His glory. Whatever you do, you need to do that He be central to it. 